Uh, so more, okay. Uh, okay, so today we're very happy to have Federico Binda uh, from Milan who will tell us about Gaga type conjecture for the Brouwer group via derived geometry. Hey, hi. Uh, thank you so much, Alden, for inviting me and, and for giving me the opportunity to give a talk in this electronic series of seminars. Okay, so um, everything today is joined with Mauro Porta from Strasbourg. And let me start from uh, a bit of motivation and, uh, and also how exactly we got into this problem. Okay, so uh, where was our starting point? Um, so let us start with, with the following setting. So we have a uh, X, X scheme, say quasi compact, quasi separated. Then we have, um, well, the cohomological Brouwer group of X that I will call the Brouwer Grothendi group of X. Which is just the, etal, uh, the second etal cohomology group of GM. So inside we have the torsion subgroup, and thanks to the uh, Skolnota theorem, um, at least in good geometric situation, we can embed uh, inside this uh, the torsion part of the Brouwer group the Brouwer group of Azmaya algebra. So this is the group of Azmaya algebras over X modulo Morita equivalent. Right. This is all very classic also, but let me still remind you what, we, what this is about. Nazumaya algebra is, a, is an algebra object in uh, quasi-coherent OX modules, such that the following two properties are satisfied. So first of all, A is a locally free um, OX module of finite rank. There's an algebra structure, so an associative algebra structure, non-commutative. And the property is that if I tensor it up with the opposite algebra, then this is uh, isomorphic to the end of A. Okay. So the endomorphism algebra of, uh, of, 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 of vector map. Okay, so this is uh, so all goes back to, uh, to Grothendieck and, uh, and uh, the Brouwer group is a well-known invariant of the scheme X and uh, let me, let me say one instance of applications for of the Brouwer group is the uh, local Brouwer Emanuel. Sorry? Do you require it to be faithful? To be faithful? Uh, the what? The, 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 the A is, well, A is a locally free OX module finite rank. So it's a vector bundle. I mean, but it could be zero on some component. No, I mean, okay, yeah, no, okay, yes, faithful, yes, yes, sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, of course, I have only. I mean, uh, of course, everything will, gener will be generalized in a second, and, and then it will require the my drive algebra to be a generator for the the, the, the category. So a uh, combined generator. So this will be obviously satisfied. Okay, so uh, let me go back to this uh, geometric or arithmetic setting. Um, let me fix R to be say complete DVR. Okay, and uh, and uh, say K is the fraction field. Of R. And let me start from, uh, for example, X over K uh, smooth and proper, or projective, smooth projective, say. And uh, let me fix, say, this X, uh, a regular model. So X over R, regular and flat. Okay, then I have a couple of pairings I can consider here. The first one is the so called Brouwer Manning pairing. So it goes uh, by picking up a, a, a well, a degree zero zero cycle, and I I can pair it with uh, a Brouwer class uh, of X. So this my, my X here is is regular. So in particular, every class can be represented by uh, an my algebra. So I'm in a very good geometric situation. And modulo going uh, by these two terms, the Brouwer group of K and the Brouwer group of the model, I can uh, go. I can pair to Q mod Z. This is a well known well known thing, and uh, uh, I have another pairing. Which is the tape pairing. Um, it can be related to the Brouwer Manning pairing by using the Albanese map here. So here I'm over, well, typically I'm over, uh, for example, my, okay, my K can be a Piadic field. So the Albanese map from Chao zero X uh, to, the, to the K points of the Albanese is far from being surjective. Okay, we are not in algebraically closed situation. 
uh, and um, the Albanese pairs with uh, certain map, and we call it just phi, it's not important for us, which comes from the oxygen cell spectral sequence. Okay, so the, the pairing is, is compatible. And uh, so this was uh, well, known the result of Lichtenbaum for curves, and then was generalized by Wataru Kai in 2015. And, uh, and in this uh, good, uh, good geometric situations, you can identify the co-kernel of the Albanese with the Pontryagin dual of the kernel of phi, uh, provided that, well, some geometric conditions are satisfied. So in particular, X over R is smooth. So we are saying good reduction. And, and this is a bit more exotic condition, pick X over R is also smooth. Okay, so where is this interesting for us? Superscript zero is on um, Chow. Sorry, Kirsten? Would you repeat what the superscript zero Degree is? zero, degree zero, zero cycles. Um, yeah, degree zero. Okay, so uh, why am I telling you about this? Well, first of all, because there is this interesting and a bit uh, suspicious condition. So the, the, the car scheme of X over R, well, this is not usually smooth, right? So this is a bit, well, it's a very strong condition, okay? So where, is, where does it come from and how is it related to uh, the question I'm actually interested to, uh, to talk about? So, um, so this, why, why does it appear? Well, this, if you um, unravel the, the way this uh, duality uh, isomorphism is constructed, then this is related to the fact that in the Bauer-Mannion pairing, uh, there is a contribution from the Brouwer group of the model. Okay, and in fact, in this situation we have, uh, Three different guys we can attach to our family of varieties x over r we have the well the, the actual borough group so let me just write it for convenience uh, h2 x gm we can um, complete along the fiber central fiber so we can take the borough group of the, of the formal scheme x so uh, say x is the limit of all the thickenings xn and i can uh, define this guy to be well i mean many ways but let me be silly and use this very concrete description so it's the h2 of uh, well, I truncate and i just take this guy i mean a meaningful way whatever i mean it's a meaningful way to define a borrow group for the formal scheme x okay well keeping in mind that that the well, if you want the, the et al uh, site of X n doesn't change, okay, because we are in the infinitesimal thickening situation, but the, the sheaf changes, okay, if I pass from X n to X n minus one. Okay, I have these two guys, and I also have a, another naive guy that I can consider, which is the limit of all the power groups, okay? And in fact, I have a factorization, uh, the power group of the model, the power group of X, this goes to the bar group of the formal scheme X, and, and I can further go to the bar group of, of a limit of the bar group of XN. Now, in this situation, okay, Grotendick in uh, Brower 3 prove the following. So let's assume that X over R is proper and flat with X regular, and R is an salient excellent BVR. And assume there is a vanishing condition of a limb one, limb one of a peak Xn is zero. Okay, then the map star that I highlighted in the previous slide. So let me write it again, goes from Brouwer of X to the limit. So it's just the composition, okay, is injective. Okay, so how does it go? Um, well, first of all, because X is regular, okay, the, the, the fact condition that the basis of DVR is not so serious. I mean, it's a, it's a consequence of the fact that at the time the Neron Popescu theorem was not available. So, I mean, you can sort of move it a bit and say, okay, R is a local, is an salient local ring. Okay, fine. So, more seriously, X is regular, so I can identify the Brouwer group of my algebras of X with the Brouwer group of X. Mm -hmm. And then in this case, you have, well, we start from a Brouwer class represented by an my algebra. 
you go modulo n, so you reduce it to okay, so this a tensor with r mod n to the n, and you assume you have trivializations, okay, with the endomorphism algebra of a certain uh, vector bundle. And then what Groton Dick did was, well, use the limb one vanishing. Okay, to uh, lift, uh, say, E to a certain bundle E hat uh, plus global trivialization from A to endomorphism of A hat. Okay, and it's exactly in the uh, lifting of a trivialization that you use this uh, twisting by uh, a line bundle at each time. Okay, so you need this sort of metaglepher condition on the on the Picard system in order to uh, Go all the way up to 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 the mod, to, to to the formal scheme. Okay. Um, okay. Then, uh, of course, this there is this limb one condition uh, appearing. Okay. And when does it hold? Well, I mean, here you go back. You get back the condition we mentioned before. For example, but this is in practice the only thing you can you can test uh, when you have the surjectivity, right? Easy easy way of imposing uh, and limb one to be zero. And this is. The case by infinitesimal lifting if peak is smooth. Okay, and is this in input somehow that was used in the previous theorem that I was discussing about the compatibility of the, of the Rower Manning pairing and the Tate pairing, uh, and, and somehow this injectivity of a Brower group, so this which we can consider to be a formal Gaga problem for, for uh, um, Brower classes, okay. Uh, I mean, to, it boils down to this kind of condition. All right. So, can I ask a couple of questions? Sure. So, do we expect this map to be surjective sometimes? Well, uh, no. <laughs> okay. I, I will. I will tell you. I will tell you more about that. And will you also explain why should I think of this as Gaga? Well, uh, why do you? Well, somehow the condition is is a is a is a formal is is, a, is one part of a Gaga statement, right? So essentially, you say you have something which is defined. Okay, you have a, you have something you define globally on model, right? Then you have the map to all these reductions, and you want to say you take the limit of all the reductions, and you want to say whether the original guy was actually the limit of all the reductions. For example, that's the reformulation on injectivity statement in this form. I see. Thank you. Okay. I will, I will say more about it, okay? So you will see more Gaga in uh, more I go into, into my talk, my actual Gaga, including the subjectivity parts, but okay. But the, the condition, the, the, the question about subjectivity is a bit subtle, so I will, I will, uh, I will comment on this later. Okay, so, um, right, so question, okay? Grotendieck, in, in, again in Brower 3. He asked the following. So is the map star, so our composition uh, injective, at least when restricted on admire classes. And he, he says for every X over R proper uh, with R in salient local. Okay, and this is exactly the, the kind of question that we want to address. All right, so um, how do we attack this problem? Okay. We, we essentially, we do, we, we do it in two steps, okay? The first one is, a, is an easy one. Okay, let's just study a certain tower of spaces, okay? And let's consider the associated Miller sequence. This is for exactly um, if you want, um, for the cohomology of, of the groups I mentioned, I mentioned before, right? So the first uh, line that you see in the slide is clearly exact. That's a Milner sequence for the cohomology of GM on the tower of XM, okay? So there you see at least one subjectivity, okay? From the Brouwer group of the formal scheme X to the limit of the Brouwer groups of the of reductions. So this is exactly the uh, limit to N of Brouwer of XM, right? And uh, uh, in this term here, is clearly the limit one of peak of Xn, right? So at least you see that uh, the obstruction that Grotendieck identified, although of course he didn't have uh, this tool at disposal, but 
um, he, he used the vanishing of LM1, and then LM1 indeed is an obstruction that we, we see in the, in the story. And, uh, and inside the Brower group of the model, here you have the Brower Zumaya of X, and you can consider the composition like this. Okay? So, as I explained before, the map star factors through the Brower group of the formal scheme X. And uh, uh, well, the map from Brower Zumaya of X to Brower of X is injected. So, one uh, way to study the problem is to study whether the map that I denoted double star is injective. Okay. And that's what we, we claim. So, we claim that this map is always injective. Okay, so we have actually two proofs of this, uh, of this statement. So one is using, um, well, rephrasing the, the theorem in terms of a smooth and proper um, ET categories. And another one is a Gaga uh, theorem for twisted sheaves. And let me start by saying something about this. Okay. Can I ask a couple quick questions? <clears throat> in, now in this question of Grotendieck, you're dropping the condition that R be a DVR, correct? Correct. Okay. And, and then- also drop flatness. Um, you also drop flatness uh, and also global regularity of the model. I drop everything. X okay. over R is just a proper map and R is in salient local ring. Great. And, and Ah, yeah. No, and, and for, for us, actually, X is going to be, uh, it's not even going to be a scheme. I mean, it works for every, for every drive scheme over, over, over the base. Mm -hmm. And d just off the top of your head, do you know an example where um, pick is smooth mm -hmm. and the limb one term doesn't vanish? If a pick is smooth, I think limb one does vanish always. Ah, okay. Because yes, it does always vanish. Okay, that's sort of what I was wondering. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, exactly. So in particular, I mean, if the condition is uh, something like the H second, the H two X O X is zero, or I mean, this is a typical condition that guarantees that uh, the pick uh, is smooth. If you dig in FGA explained, okay, the climbing thing, and it gives you a bunch of conditions, of so dramatic conditions on, on, under which the Picard scheme is the smooth. Okay, so right. So let me let me start with with. Uh, okay, let me. I, I promise to tell you something more about the the first approach, and then if I'm if I have time, I will also say something about the second approach. But for this, let me um, do a bit of recap on on some derived Morita theory, and because this is what we're going to use. Okay, so let me start from uh, recalling something about classical Morita theory. So R is a, let's say R is a ring, a commutative ring, and I take A and B to non-commutative, not necessarily commutative R algebras. Then um, we, we say that A is Morita equivalent to B uh, if the categories of modules are equivalent. So on A is equivalent to on B. And also Morita theory tells you what the functors between module categories are, namely you can identify them with by modules. And uh, um, we can also characterize Admaya R algebras as being the invertible objects uh, in the Morita equivalence class of algebras over R. So A is Admaya, if and only if there exists a certain A prime, which completely will be the opposite algebra, such that A tensor A prime is Morita equivalent to, to R itself. Okay, so what about the derived version of it? So R is going to be a commutative DG algebra, for example, and mod R is the category, um, PT category of R modules. And uh, okay, inside I have a category of perfect, perfect modules, and um, I denote by cat tensor R the R the, the PT category of small R linear uh, categories. In this, among these objects, I define Morita equivalence 
uh, well, to be exactly the generalization of the previous um, of the previous notion. So, if the, if the categories of modules, okay, uh, are equivalent, so modules are going to be these guys here. So, this would be let me use C hat and C prime hat. This was Twen's notation, and this is an equivalence in um, the category of presentable stable are linear infinity categories. And if I localize uh, cut. Um, with respect to Morita, so our linear categories with respect to Morita equivalence, I, I get the thing I'm, I'm interested in. So this is the localization of uh, cat r answer with respect to uh, Morita. Okay, so. Um, hey, Federico, I'm, I'm confused. Can you go up? I can, yes. Yeah, which is, wouldn't you want to say that C and C prime are Morita equivalent if in C is equivalent to in C prime? Well, so you can, prime. it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, and, I, and this is explained in this next slide. Okay. Okay. So, and, and actually, this is what precisely what you are referring to. So, I have this, uh, this nice picture. Okay. So, I can, um, I start from our linear categories. I have inside, I didn't put in complete our linear categories. I can take in. Uh, of an idempotent complete or linear category, and I go to uh, well, I get the an object in the symmetric model infinity categories of uh, compactly generated uh, infinity categories, and and the taking compact objects and taking int objects are mutually inverse to each other. And one of the theorems in the in the, in the theory is that uh, this is a way these are all ways to realize the infinity categories of our linear infinity categories. Uh, up to Morita equivalence. Okay, so everything sits inside in a known. Uh, well, this is not fully faithful. Okay, in a known fully faithful way, uh, the big category of um, R linear uh, stable infinity categories. And the interesting thing for us is that the PRL omega has a nice close symmetric model structure. And uh, for given two objects here, the tensor product uh, represents uh, by functor, by functors, uh, say C times C prime to uh, our modules um, that commute with uh, compact objects and further co limits in both variables. So. Compact objects plus uh, limits in, in both in C and C prime, and uh, I have a nice duality theory in uh, inside PRL omega. Uh, so let me uh, use this in this notation. So DRC is going to be the dual of of C, so just the category of functors. I have natural evaluation functor from C uh, times the dual to our modules. And I can also define a co-evaluation um, functor, which classifies C as a C tensor R DRC module. And a priori, uh, these maps uh, are only in, uh, uh, well, here, and not in uh, PR and omega. Okay, so uh, well, this brings uh, uh, somehow us to the new to the next to the next definition, and that's the definition of smooth and proper of the smooth and proper category. Okay, so an object C in PRL omega R is going to be proper if the evaluation map. So let me just show both in the slides. So evaluation map is just the evaluation from. C times the Fanter category to our modules. So uh, if this itself is uh, in PRL omega, so this means that uh, well, essentially, essentially this, so C x y is compact for every x y. It's a compact object in our modules, so it's perfect complex. And it's smooth if uh, it is dualizable in PRL plus coevaluation is in PRL omega. 
Okay, so essentially, you want all the compatibility to be satisfied. I mean, in good conditions, this is uh, the dualizability in PRL, PRL, R is automatic. So the actual the juice of the story is uh, if a co evaluation is in uh, PRL omega or the evaluation is in PRL omega. Okay, so essentially, um, these are the two properties that we are going to, we're going to study. Okay, so to summarize, we have uh, compactly generated infinity categories. And we say that this such a guy is uh, smooth and proper if it behaves in this way. Okay, so if, if you want concretely, um, if the home spaces are all uh, perfect complexes, okay, that's the properness. And smoothness is a condition on uh, C being compact as an object in the category of C tensor C op uh, module. Okay, so uh, smoothness is a very um, convenient condition because it tells you that the guy is itself actually equivalent to a category of modules. Okay, for some uh, well, E1 algebra. And the, 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 the condition that C is dualizable, so if you combine plug the two things together, means that all the uh, uh, compatibility between evaluation and um, co-evaluations are actually inside the category of compactly generated infinity, early and infinity categories, and so it has to be simultaneously smooth and proper. Okay, so what has this to do with Azmaya algebras? Well, um, two, in two ways. First of all, if you start from uh, an Azmaya algebra, so, well, for example, any one, uh, well, actually from any E1 algebra in, uh, in our modules, you can get an object in the category of our linear infinity categories just by taking, okay, well, I pick up the category of one object and then I declare B to be the endomorphism of this object. Okay, and then I can project in the globalization up to Morita. This is just another instance of P R omega R as a U pi by virtue of uh, the diagram I showed you before. And uh, uh, the condition of being at Zamaya, remember classically was the condition that the algebra was invertible in the Morita equivalence class of um, um, our algebras. And well, the condition here is the same. So if a, the class of A in uh, uh, our linear categories model Morita is invertible. So let me denote by brackets like this, the class of an algebra. So which means the category is suited to the algebra. And equivalently, uh, if you want, this is also the definition that Twain originally, uh, originally gave, two things are satisfied. The first one is that A is compact generator for mod R. The second one is that, well, let me uh, take the tensor product. Okay, now everything is derived, so let me just write it for emphasis. And this is equivalent to the category, well, to the, sorry, to the endomorphism of, um, of A, right? And this is a quasi isomorphism So this is the straightforward generalization of growth index original uh, original definition and theorem of Twain is that um, a compactly generated R linear infinity category is invertible if and only if C is equivalent to the category of A modules for A in Azmai algebra. Okay, so um, okay. I hope everything is all right so far. Quick, quick comment, Federico. In your the first line of the remark, I think you need to remove one of the directions of the if and only if. Uh, probably, I have to remove it. I think, I think if it's smooth, so the no. leftward facing. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, sure. Sorry, of course, yes. I mean, I, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, of course, this is what I need, right? I mean, I, I use that if C is smooth, then is the is the equivalent to a category of modules, and then I study the properties of this module. Oh, the OV, OV. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is the picture in the local situation. So, which means if my, or if you want in the affine situation, if my base R is, well, a, a ring, okay, DG, DG algebra, the right ring. So, this thing uh, globalizes in, a, in an actually non trivial way. So, let me uh, 
let me give you our um, our take on this. So you can consider following uh, following Functor. Sorry, can I ask before you start? Uh, sure. On the previous slide, how am I supposed to believe in this theorem? How are you supposed to believe in the theorem? No, like why why anything invertible is modding? Well, uh, you 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 should first of all convince yourself that everything is well. You can write okay. So how do you build the algebra? You mean, for example, how do you get the a? from C. Yeah. OK, so uh, well, that's easy. So you need a compact generator. Mm -hmm. And then you take the endomorphism algebra of your compact oh, generator. Yeah. OK. Yeah. This is the one algebra. And then you take, uh, and then the claim is that uh, the category is equivalent to the category of modules over the endomorphism algebra of your generator. Yeah, yeah, OK. okay. And, then, and then you have to fool around with the G properties of, a gen of, of this guy to, and, and here is exactly where the assumptions on uh, uh, smooth and properness appear. Right to 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 you know to get uh, to get something and uh, uh, to, to to realize this is not my algebra. Okay, nice. I mean it's not an obvious theorem. Okay, but but somehow it's it's at least believable that there is an algebra floating around. And for example, you see, I mean properness implies that the algebra has to be itself uh, uh, perfect as considered as an underlying uh, R module. Mm -hmm. That's that's hid, hidden in the properness condition. And, and, and so on, right? I mean, it's not it's not difficult. But read read uh, either Twen's paper or Ben uh, paper with uh, um, David Gepner on this. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, right. So I was saying that the notion generalizes uh, globalizes in, a, in actually non-trivial way, and uh, so let me say quickly how. Okay, so um, let's consider the following functor from uh, uh, the opposite category of uh, derived affine um, uh, schemes over R. So you, you start from spec of A, okay, and here you go to the uh, category PRL of A, okay, so this is if you want is modules over A modules in presentable. Infinity categories. Okay, so this has two subfunctors. The first one is the well, compactly generated guy, and the second one is the omega guy. The difference between the two of the two is that CG sits uh, fully faithful inside PRL, and omega doesn't sit fully faithful inside PRL. Okay, the, the, the arrows are different. So it's exactly the, the 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 thing I was stressing before that in PRL omega require Functors to be well left to joints uh, commuting with um, compact objects, okay, preserving compact objects. All right, so um, let me still spell out what I what I'm doing. So here I have P R L C C G A. So this sits inside this guy, okay, and here I take the Compactly generated versions, sort of a true compactly generated version, like this. Um, okay, so it's, it's a theorem of, of uh, Jacob Lurie that uh, the first two guys satisfy etal descent. Then you can you can uh, play a bit, and you can actually show that uh, the same is true for the omega guy, provided that you don't ask for etal descent, but only uh, the risky descent on uh, uh, quasi compact, quasi separated things. So, um, anyhow, so let, let me, I will use this later. Uh, so, if I start from a drive stack over R, I get um, in general a comparison functor from the values of my. Uh, of of my sheaf, okay, whatever, uh, quasi coherent cat, cat quasi coherent X, which means if you want sheaves of quasi coherent uh, uh, categories over over X, okay, that's sort of global section guy. To the the other thing you can consider in PRL, namely, you take modules over quasi cold X inside PRL of R. Okay, so the two things are not uh, obviously the same. Okay, so one side is the value of, I mean, they're not obviously the same for known affine things. 
Okay, so the, the, the functor quasi cat is defined and affines in this way, then, well, you, you know, you chillify and you evaluate on, on, on X and then you ask yourself, well, what do I, what do I get? Okay, so this compares, obviously compares naturally with the guy on the right hand side, but it's not clear if the two things are the same. And if this happens, then X deserves a special name and the name is being one affine. So X is one affine if gamma X is an equivalence. Okay, and is a theorem of gates query, but this is the case if X is a quasi-compact, quasi-separated derived scheme. And in fact, we can say a bit, a bit more, and, uh, which is the following. So uh, let me consider another functor. So let me call it gamma X omega. So this is a comparison functor between uh, the omega version of quasi-co-cat and the omega version of the target. So I take, um, so X is a quasi-compact, quasi-separated uh, derived scheme for me now. I take modules inside PRL omega. This makes sense, okay? Because the category is itself compactly generated. So I take uh, well, so this guy and I call it non-commutative spaces over X, okay? That's just a name. Now, the following is, uh, the following is true. So first of all, the, um, Sort of gate query, gate score result can be extended to this situation. So this is an equivalence. And uh, uh, the second one is that after this, you can actually control properties like being smooth and proper in a, in a fairly local way, in the following sense. So uh, say an object in the, in the right hand side, so non commutative non commutative space of Rex is uh, dualizable. If uh, and only if Rex is an affine risky open cover of X such that the uh, base change, okay, C tensor over quasi co X with quasi co of Y is so now we live in this category, okay, is move and proper. Which now makes sense, right? Because I am in um, in a category for which Morita theory is quite simple. I mean, the, the way I discussed before, and the same holds true for invertible objects, so for Adumaya algebras. Okay? Well, for things that we would like to be at my algebra. So C is invertible if and only if there is an affine risky open cover such that the same base change. Is Morita equivalent to an Adamaya algebra? Of course, derived. Okay. So, right. Moreover, uh, let me call smooth and proper. Well, let me add the subscript, uh, superscript smooth and proper on NC of X to note the well uh, gadgets in NCX which are um, dualizable. Okay. Then this is the case if and only if uh, C is uh, of this form, so is module over A in the category of quasi coherent OX modules for A a sheaf of uh, perfect uh, OX modules. Okay, so after after this, I can uh, I can state our theorem, our main theorem. So that's our setting. So R n is an Ethereum complete local ring. The extension from complete to Encelian is easy. So let me just state the uh, complete uh, statement. And I take X a proper derived scheme over R, and I consider the following symmetric moidal functor. So I start from non commutative spaces smooth and proper over X, so not simply, not just invertible, okay, uh, just dualizable. And I go to the limit 
of all these uh, all these categories. So the functor is uh, is defined in the obvious way, right? I take a, a category and I associate the uh, so say C goes to C n. Let me use this notation. Okay, then our theorem says that this functor is fully faithful. So equivalently, uh, for every C in uh, uh, and C X smooth and proper, uh, C is equivalent to the limit C N in N C X, right? Which is uh, modules in, so which is modules over quasi coax dr l omega oh dr c okay make r okay right so how do you prove such a statement i mean after or like if you plug everything together so essentially the point is that uh, we can identify c as we said with modules over a on uh, quasi co of x, and I can decorate this with compact objects. And if I do so, I can take modules inside Earth of x. And once you have rephrased the, the, your, your um, statement in this way, so now becomes a question about, about the algebra. And then you can use formal Gaga. for uh, perfect complexes. Okay, so um, first question that you certainly will have, is the functor essentially subjective? No, it's not. Uh, sorry, Frederick, can I ask you a question? Sure. So when X is like the, when X to spec R is the identity, right? Uh, this is an, it's an equivalence, isn't it? And I think this is like more well known. Is that right? It is uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. But yes. you can only well, prove uh, here. Actually, actually, okay. So two comments. So if x over r is is actually smooth. So if x was smooth over r, then this would follow from uh, from um, another result in I think I, I I don't know if in our algebra in spec algebra somewhere in Yuri. Okay. Yeah, which I can right. point. I mean, which which. Yeah. I, Laura can point you to, but the result for for x if x was uh, smooth and proper, then this would it would, would be known. Great, great, great. great. So we uh, is that an equivalence without having any condition on x? So right, is it an equivalence in the case of smooth and proper? Uh, is an equivalence in case of smooth and proper? I I think so. Yes, okay. I think. So. Yeah. Thank you. Is it true? Uh, I don't remember. I don't. I cannot answer on the top of my head. I vaguely remember yes, but I might be wrong. Anyway, in the general case, it's definitely not. Okay, so the obstruction, I mean, I will explain your obstruction in, in a second. So let me let me say how you can apply this to our original question. Okay, so let me say this and then I will, well, I will, I will let you know why this uh, sort of um, gives you an obstruction to the essential subjectivity of, of the functor. So let me uh, write D as cat for the infinity category um, of derived Hadzumani algebras. On X. Okay, so this sits inside uh, PR L omega of X. So this is a full sub category, if you want, um, spanned by By, uh, oh, by A mod, okay, for A at Maya. Well, if, if you like to think about, I mean, if you think, uh, if you like to think about this guy in, in this way, okay. So um, there is another theorem of Tolen, which says the following. So if X is a quasi-compact, quasi-separated derived scheme, then uh, this thing agrees with, uh, Invertible objects in NCX. So these are invertible objects in um, PRL omega of X. Okay, so this is a non trivial extension of the statement I gave you before when X was a fine, okay, because I'm somehow claiming the existence 
of um, yeah of globally defined Zmi algebra on X, okay, which is also what I wrote before below. But somehow it's it's, it's not a formal consequence of the previous uh, results. That's what I want to want to stress. And uh, you can this is this uh, the second line of the theorem is, is much easier. Okay, so if you consider the um, maximal groupoid, then uh, this is an easy description. So this is Kgn2 times Kz1, okay, as drive stacks. And this comes from an observation of the auto equivalences of the trivial object. Okay, so that's not complicated. Uh, much more complicated is to identify this guy with actual um, globally defined into my algebra as an X, which is the last line. So if I take the uh, if I define the power group of X to be what I wrote below, so the equivalence classes of globally defined my algebra as an X, this agrees with the pi naught of the stack uh, written above, okay? which, which for the ancients was also H2XGN times H1XZ. Okay, so the, the nice take home of, of Toyn theorem is that every class in H2XGM, so even non torsion classes, can be represented by globally defined derived to my algebras on X. Okay. And why classically, uh, growth in the theorem was that under good conditions, so for example, if X, well, this is uh, not the theorem of growth in the but of, of Gabbard, but uh, if X was uh, whatever, quasi projective, I don't know, uh, X with uh, maybe a ample family of line bundles, something, something, for example, quasi projective, then uh, then every torsion class in H2XGM can be realized by an Azumai algebra. And somehow this is the overkill theorem of, by, by, of Twen, but if you don't insist on having um, vector bundles, but you are happy with perfect complexes, then, well, you don't have to restrict yourselves to torsion classes. All right, so uh, how do you get from this uh, the objectivity? Uh, Sorry, can you can you give us thirty more seconds of watching the theorem that you just? Yes, said? you can. You can contemplate the theorem longer. It's a beautiful theorem, so I, I yes. agree. And with the definition above it, <laughs> can with you the definition. Go a little bit? definition? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Please. <laughs> you you can if you have questions more you can you can ask. Uh, I'm trying to. So, oh. Questions. Or mm. later. <laughs> so third third line of the theorem looks like it follows from the second line. At least this case. No, 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 no. The third line, the content of the third line of the, of the theorem is that on the left side, so D Brower of X is the group of globally defined Admai algebras. It means that you have a, a perfect complex on X mm -hmm. with a multiplication. That is a compact generator for quasi coax, okay, and which is a Dumaya, which means that a tensor derived tensor product with a op is equivalent quasi isomorphic to the endomorphism algebra of, uh, mm -hmm. of a. Okay, so it's something globally defined on X. Mm -hmm. And on the right side, you have the well, the by zero of this mapping stack mm -hmm. so map from X to KGM to KZ1. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's a very there is a there's a question of, I mean, in Twain's uh, approach, this was a question of gluing compact generators. Somehow you can do this locally, and then you want to to build something which is globally defined on X. Very nice. I see. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Okay. So let me let me say how you get from uh, Twain's theorem plus our general theorem of smooth and categories the result we wanted on the Brouwer proof, and this is the that's uh, it's on the slide. Okay, so let's uh, recap. So we have X a derived scheme proper over spec of R. R Noetherian, say complete for simplicity local. And then um, I, I have the derived power groups of X, which is just defined to be the, if you want to just be H2XGN by, by virtue, I mean, let me forget about the H1XZ. Okay, that's not important. Injectivity holds also for that guy, but let me focus on the classically interesting part. So the H2XGM. Um, okay, so I have uh, right. So I have the derived prior group of X. This maps to the derived prior group of the, the formal scheme, which I can now define in a more intelligible way, rather than being the H2 of a certain whole limb of the truncation blah blah that I wrote at the beginning. This is simply the mapping stack 
from uh, x, which is the co-limit of all the xn's to the odds. And then I take the pi zero of this guy. And then I can project to the limit uh, of uh, h2xn gn. So if I look at the Milner sequence for um, for the for this drive stack, okay, so for the odds of x, then I get back something which looks like the original sequence that is considered by Grothendieck, and uh, in particular, there is this lim one of pi one of the derive of a stack of derived Atmaya algebras. So this is just by Twain's theorem, lim one of pick x n plus the lim one of h0 x n z. Aha, uh -huh. but this guy is zero, right? So this doesn't contribute. So I get only the contribution that Grotendieck already envisioned, this guy here. And inside here, I have the pi zero of the uh, of x. How do I get this? Well, just by our, our theorem. So I have n c x smooth and proper, fully faithful in n c, well, the limit n c x n uh, smooth and proper. The functor is fully faithful n monoidal. So I can pass to invertible objects. And if I pass to invertible objects and I plug in also to n theorem and I pass to pi zero, then I get the, the injectivity here. Okay, so passing to invertible objects. All right, so question of uh, uh, Mura and, and Ben. The map here, where the pink one, is not surjective in general. And the sort of counterexample comes from the contribution, actually from the contribution of, of H1, okay? Because uh, you, can, you can consider the following situation. So you have, um, so X over R, say a family of one dimensional, uh, say a family of curves, okay? With a generic fiber, or well, actually the model regular, and say that the H1, uh, so in particular it's normal, okay? So it doesn't have uh, any, any H1, uh, with coefficients in z, okay? And uh, on the other hand, you can have a special fiber which is a singular curve, say a cuspidal curve, for which the contribution of h1, x1, z is non is non trivial. Perigo, do you mean a nodal curve? I mean, I mean actually a nodal curve. Yes, Jack. Yes, sorry. Hold on. Well, whatever. Anything with anything which has a non trivial h1, x, z. Yes. Thanks. Uh, right, so so here is my so this gives you an obstruction to the subjectivity of a map on the of the level of pi zero of uh, this derive of stacks of my algebras, which means that my original functor cannot be fully faithful. Sorry, uh, essentially subjective, even when restricted to invertible objects. Right, because well, yeah, because of that. Yeah. Otherwise, they would have uh, had um, an equivalence of pi zeros which is not the case. And as I commented before, uh, if R in salient quasi-excellent is also okay uh, by, 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 some simple, by some simple manipulation. Okay. So, but I don't want to comment uh, too much about that. Let me say something more. So if, the, if you are in a family of, of curves, okay, so if the dimension of X over R is uh, smaller or equal to one, then you get in particular that the contribution of a limb one uh, is always zero. So what you get is that this map is always injective, okay? As a consequence of our, of our theorem. And I, I want to stress that this is even stronger uh, than, than what was conjectured by Grothendieck in the case of curves. Actually, he, he, he says that it's unlikely that the map from H to XGN to the limit is injective in general. And he sketches an example and, uh, and uh, he's right, but he, this thing works from dimension two onwards. 
where, where actually this contribution from within one is non is, is non trivial. Okay, but in dimension at most one, then uh, well, what 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 he says doesn't work, and and uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, and then we get a stronger results. So if this fails, let me just stress that he is right, of course, in the general situation. So this fails uh, in dimension. Uh, at least two. So Sorry, I have, Federica. Yeah. Uh, can I ask a quick question? Uh, oh. So, it, it, does your theorem require your ring to be Henselian local, or does this assumption appear somewhere else throughout these uh, these these arguments? No, I mean, okay. So our all the arguments that uh, that we use so far were um, of Gaga type. So I actually use the fact that so we actually use the fact that the base was complete. And then, for the sake of proving injectivity, we could push this from the complete case to the Ansayan. So we get we get a stronger result, but only somehow from this point of view. But I see. But the the main fully faithfulness statement about that Ansi was complete, that was for complete. Uh, base. I see. I see. Thank basis. you. So it is an interesting question to, um, I mean, at least for us, it's, it is an interesting question to figure out which classes can be actually recovered from, from this factor, right? So, okay, I mean, I showed you that the factor is not fully, is not essentially subjective, but you can still wonder which kind of classes can you recover? So what's the, what's the image, right? And, and this is related to, uh, to a deep question of lifting compact generators from the special fiber to the old family, for which we don't have a definite answer, but it's it's uh, I think it's an interesting problem. Okay, so in the last four minutes, let me say something about the second approach we have to this uh, to this problem. Somehow um, it has some merits, okay, and and uh, is more geometric in nature maybe, and this passes through a formal Gaga result for twisted sheaves, okay. So let me quickly say how, how we do this. So um, instead of representing every class in H2 XGM as derived of my algebra, so this is what Twain was giving us, we can much more classically represent uh, these classes as gem gerbs, okay? So which are certain, certain kind of art and stacks. So this is the question of formal injectivity is the following. So let me start from class in H2 XGM. Let's suppose that this goes to zero in the uh, barber group of a, of a formal scheme. So, um, so it, right, so I represent my class by a GM gerb. So this is something that is locally, uh, locally looks like uh, X times, it's locally, locally trivial and the trivial gerb is something like this. Okay, X times BGM. And if I reduce modulo, n for every n, and I assume that this class goes to zero, this means that my uh, an, right, is equivalent to, well, it's isomorphic to bgm times x, right, and then I can project down to bgm. And by composition here, I have mapped to bgm, which is classifying a line bundle. Okay, so what I'm saying is that, um, Every time I, I have, well, I have a map from a n to b g n times x, which is my trivialization for every fixed n, I go back to b g m and I'm, I'm classifying line bundles on, on a n. Okay? And the condition that this is trivial in the limit means that I have a bunch of, of, of trivializations, say phi n, which are compatible up to a certain homotopy. Okay? And I, I, want to, I want to figure out how to globally trivialize my jerk, right? So I want to go up to x. Okay, so then if you study more precisely what the problem uh, what the problem is, then what you need to do is to study the uh, Picard group of A and compare it with the limit of the Picard of A n. Okay, so these are uh, well. This is another Gaga question. Okay, this is the formal Gaga for the Picard. Uh, for a Picard group, but now of, of a gerb, not of X. And I want to stress that A over X is, yes, is a relative Artin stack, but is not proper. So 
So you cannot just say, well, this is true because this, this is an equivalence because, well, because yes, because the, I do have formal Gaga for Artin stacks, for proper Artin stacks, because the Gaga is not proper. So the way we do this is uh, by, by means of a different, different kind of result. And this is, the, this is what we proved. So we proved this so that for every gen gerb over any proper derived scheme, uh, you, can, uh, you can actually reconstruct completely the category of either almost perfect complexes of A or of perfect complexes of A in terms of a limit of the reductions, which is you know, a stronger form of Gaga, or real Gaga if you want. And the way we do, uh, we, we do this is by proving a derived version of the result of, of Lieblich, uh, which is the decomposition, uh, decomposition theorem of the category of quasi-coherent sheets on a gerb. So you prove that the infinity category quasi co A decomposes as product over the characters of GM, so over the integers of quasi co X uh, of A. Right, so these are the key homogeneous part of a, of a uh, category of quasi-coherent sheaves on A. And then the classical category of twisted sheaves is the um, category of um, sort of is the uh, homogeneous components for the identity character, okay, for the identity. This is what classically was called the, uh, the category of twisted sheaves by, by the germs. And this is what was studied by many people, um, for example, by, by Lieblich. And, uh, and uh, in a way, this is another, this is, a, this is a copy, okay? It's a twisted copy of a category of quasi-coherent sheaves on X, okay? And now X is proper over S. So uh, perfect complexes on A, well, they can be realized as, uh, well, a finite, a finite sum of perfect complexes on, uh, on A, each of which is key homogeneous for a certain character, you have finitely many of them. And now each part can be separately reconstructed uh, by using Gaga for uh, formal Gaga, Gaga for uh, perfect complexes on X. Okay, so if you if you decompose uh, sheaves on the gerb in terms of characters for the group, then you can you can use the fact that X was proper, and even though A was not proper, you still have a Gaga type theorem. Okay, so this is uh, all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker. Any questions for Federico? Uh, sorry, Federico. So, in the last uh, in the last proof, do you claim that this Q uh twisted by the character can be described in terms of Q Koch of X in some sense? In, in a non canonical sense? way. In a non canonical way. Uh, I mean, but... like the quasi. Okay, so this is um, this can be, this can be obtained by uh, quasi co of. Uh, a on the identity character. I mean, if you have an action of the characters on this thing, okay. So, yeah, you can, uh, you can, yeah, you have a, if you, you know, character, one character, another character, then you can sum of them and you get the quasi coherent of the sum of characters and so on. So, you have a, you have a, you can play with operations on the characters and you get corresponding operations on the tensor product over quasi code X of your categories of, uh, of, of Q homogeneous sheaves. Okay. Mm. And uh, and uh, yeah, and in particular for the for the identity for the identity character, this is this is a copy, okay, of uh, of quasi code. Yeah. I see. Thank you. I mean, in the case of a trivial trivial gerb, then it is canonically quasi covax. Okay, for the product of quasi covax for all characters. Yeah. 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 yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. Thank you. Very cool talk. Thank you. Any other questions? So, sorry. So, so in the last result, for example, is uh, would it also work if it's if R is I adequately complete for some ideal I, but not necessarily local? Sorry. Sorry. I can't. Can you say it again? Sorry. So, would it? I mean, would the last result also hold if uh, if R is complete with respect to some ideal I, but, but not necessarily local? Uh, we haven't thought about that. Mm. You want to say? Well, if it's complete, if R is complete, with respect, Mao is here. So if it's complete uh, with respect to an ideal, 
Not uh, the maximum ADL. Uh, not the maximum ADL. Mm. But complete. But complete, yes. <sighs> well, we haven't, we haven't seriously thought about that. But. Mm. I mean, as long as, yes, I mean, as long as you have Dagra on for, for perfect complexes on X, then I think the proof goes through. The, the number about the job, I don't know. The, yeah, for the for the for the for the for the general the general side obviously is that uh, whenever you are able to prove something for for perf somehow you get the the, the inject the fully faithfulness at uh, the category five that mm -hmm. So I mean that's how we prove this, and then we prove the couple of other results uh, in the same spirit same way. So I get the feeling that it's pretty almost tough. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, always the same machine. Uh, mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks. So there are no results uh, between Grotten and you and you. Sorry about this. Uh, there are no results between Grotten and you about this injectivity. Apparently, apparently no. I mean, uh, I, I don't know if this is because it was a forgotten question or I don't know why, but no, we couldn't really. I mean, th there are things. Well, well, the, well there is one thing, which is uh, the, 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 the No, or, but uh, so Grotendik has an extra assumption, which is uh, S must be a DDR. Yeah, and and this thing was settled quite early, right? Yes, by yeah. by, I mean, we found it in the paper of Zetavitus, mm -hmm. but it's it's actually in the wrong book. I scored the same yeah. I mean, Yes, but that's that's also what we, we use. Uh, I mean, the same paper by Zetavitus and uh, and uh, Boutier, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the argument we use to pass from a complete to the salient case, and and uh, he discusses this kind of questions. And, and also, I mean, if you read it, between the lines, they also observe that the surjectivity cannot, cannot possibly hold at the level of, uh, at this level, okay? Surjectivity of, of a map, right? Of a map from the derived power group of X to the derived power group of, uh, of, um, of the formal scheme. But it is again, it's a question of H1 and knowing that there is an obstruction, but the H1 doesn't behave, so H1Z doesn't behave well in tiny bits, essentially. But, but apart from that, and we are not aware of, I mean, if you are aware of the results yeah, in between them, yeah. please tell us. Yeah. But we are not aware of, uh, we are not aware of results uh, after, after Grotendieck. I mean, he asks this question in hour three and then we'll, Okay, uh, any other questions? If not, let's thank Federico again. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Stop recording.